Buon pomeriggio a tutti, uh, questa volta parlo in inglese perché devo praticare la mia seconda lingua. Allora ho pensato a voi se c'è un problema, uh, vado un po' piano in inglese. Allora, what is sport? What is it to you? To the culture? To the world? To me? For me, sport is another world. It educated me from a young age, from the age of 12 to the age of, I'm not going to say, because I don't want to tell you how old I am, but it, it kind of taught me a lot of things that I can go towards living in a perfect world. Living in a perfect world is a bit difficult, I know, but uh, athletics, taught me a lot of things, taught me to fight, a fair fight, respect for the next, I don't care where you come from, which country you come from, I just don't care. I just want to be your competitor and you're my competitor, we're going to fight for the same medal, the same title together, but off the track, we're friends. I noticed that one of my 23 years or doing athletics from the age of 12 to 35, I went through a lot of hell. I did a lot of sacrificing, moving from England to Italy for love, because it wasn't for athletics, it was for love. Leaving my family friends behind, because at the same time, I wanted to arrive to my own goal, my meaning on the planet, maybe. I know it sounds so profound, but it, that's how I felt. I needed to do something. I wanted to follow my, my ambition, my goal. My goal was to fly. Fly for that millisecond, millisecond, but fly, and maybe win a gold medal. And I did that. And thanks to my life as an athlete, it kind of helped me after my post-career, after athletics. Now, Let's go a bit more profound on what, how this competitiveness, and I would say the sport mindset, came to me, how I learned. Athletics is a very individual sport, so therefore you have to train, you have to organize your life, organize your competitions by yourself or with a small group of people. I had my coach, my physio, and myself, and my two pairs, and my leg, pairs of legs. They're the only ones I had to depend on. And with my sport mindset, I was determined, determined to go to my goal. And with that, I had a lot of beliefs and values. I learned a lot of beliefs and values. Values, as I said before, fair play. Beliefs that I can go over that barrier. At the time, the barrier was seven meters, and it's still a barrier in the world of athletics, especially for women. Seven meters is a barrier. And as I used to call myself, I was the breaker of barriers, the BB. Because I wanted to win, I wanted to get that seven meters. It was something special. It was like, for an example, Roger Bannister, years ago in England, he actually was looking, he was actually questioning the athletes who did more than, for doing a mile, everybody does over four minutes. Everybody was thinking it's impossible to do a mile in four minutes. Roger Bannister, with this mindset, he said, no, it can't be. Roger Bannister in England, he started training and organizing himself and also strategizing his training sessions, how to improve his running. And nobody believed him. But at a certain time in the race, he went under four minutes. And under that four minutes, everybody says, oh, well, then everybody can do four minutes. And then you can imagine competitions after competitions, everybody was going under four, four minutes for the mile. So it's a question of the mind. And with that, when I was a kid, I was lucky enough to have an old coach called Jonathan. He actually, in the, probably he taught me how to use the brain, because I actually read and I actually told me, um, athlete's performance is 95% in the head. 5% is physical. Doesn't seem like that, does it? But it is, it's all in here. And with that, he taught me to visualize, to meditate, to actually visualize a perfect jump. That seven meters jump, 701, 710, 715, but that jump, the perfect jump. Because it has said that you memorize 
you actually send impulses of your brain into your muscles. And with that, you're actually training, with that actually physically training. And it works, I have to admit. I prepared, I actually carried all that to when I became Italian. So you can imagine, yes, I'm the, world, the most, what was it, the most medaled athlete of athletics because every year I visualize the perfect jump, the perfect competition. But apart from athletics, it came to a point that when I had to leave, when I had to kind of retire, I was in a panic. I thought, how the hell am I going to do, have a perfect normal life? I've like wasted 35 years of my life jumping in sand pits. You're thinking, damn, what the hell am I going to do? I was lucky I got a university degree in England before I came over. And actually, slowly but surely, I realized that I have this mental mindset, sport mindset that can apply for life. So therefore, I had to compete. Compete here, instead of my legs, compete here. And that's the thing that makes it even better still. Because sport really taught me to do what I'm doing now. So everybody was like asking, Fiona, how can you become an actress, a dancer, a presenter? Now you're in the world of football instead of athletics. How do you do it? I have the sport mindset. I actually believe that I can do certain things. I should visualize. I know it's, that's my secret. I visualize. I learn. Because you can't say you know everything because nobody knows everything. Life is a continuing learning process. You have to find the strategy. You have to find the opportunity. And when you find that opportunity, you have to knock on the door and open it and try to find, take that opportunity and make the best of it and learn. I'm constantly learning, I'm constantly reading, I'm constantly looking and studying other people, famous people, businessmen, especially women. Because it's something I can understood that as a sportswoman, I wasn't really considered to be a sportswoman. We were like, as I say, maschiaccia. Because there's no word for it in England, in English, maschiaccia. I had short hair, and yes, I had a bit of muscle, but there's no difference as I am now. But I was considered as a maschiaccia, I was considered not a woman, 100%. And that was one of the barriers that actually broke, and that, believe me, it was a hard barrier to break. Because you feel ugly, you feel like you're not worth it. You win the gold medal, everybody says, brava! But in the end, they just don't consider you as a woman. I can tell I'm a woman, 100%. You can ask my ex-husband. She's a woman, 100%. But they look at you, consider you as an alien, that you're not a real woman. But or not for my friends, but other women, I have to meet other women, but also the rest of the men. So therefore, there was one of the barriers I had to break. And that barrier, look, having that experience, breaking the barriers still as a woman, post-athlete, it's the same thing. The worst thing about it, I th found a strategy. The mindset, the sports mindset. How would I go ahead and compete with my male co counterparts and other women, but in an in a equal way and respect for everybody else? That is something that I think every man, woman and child have to find, is to break the barriers, because now we have too many barriers. We have too many barriers, men, women, child, black, white, tall, short, everything. We're in 2016. We need to break those barriers. And I think it's important that for me, as I am Fiona May, I want to break all barriers. I want to be the first for doing this and that, but also give the, how do you say, the courage, the determination. And also, this is the example I want to follow but in a good way. I break in Paris because I'm a single mother now. I'm in Korea, I've got two children. That's always, always a barrier. Because you can imagine the barriers like seeing other parents, other mothers, seeing me just with the children, going to school, taking to all the uh, sporting events, sporting activities, and also being a Korean woman. People kind of look at you in a strange way, but then I am a barrier breaker. I want to break it. I want to be a good person. I want to give something back to the public, to the society. And that all brings back to where I came from. I came from a world of sport. And that is something that I would like to kind of transmit to everybody. Everybody can do whatever they want to do. Doesn't matter how old you are. 
And I think it's the strategy, like the youngsters I find today, the strategy, everybody wants, I want to be this. But they're all sitting down and waiting for the opportunity to pass like a train. It doesn't come. You have to call the train. You have to wait for it. And when it comes, you have to jump on it because it's not going to stop and let you go on the train and go, no, you've got to jump on it and hang on to it. And I think that's what the difference is with the new generation now. They assume everything comes on a plate. It doesn't. My medals, my 11 medals for Italy, did not come on a plate. I suffered. I cried. I was broken. Muscles ripped. Muscles torn. Muscles tired. But I still went on because I had that dream to fly and to win a gold medal. So therefore, I want to teach people, especially my children, especially my young oldest daughter, Larissa, if you want something, you need to get it. Grab it and don't let go. But don't sit down there thinking it's going to come past the opportunity. No, you have to look for it because it could be hidden under the table. It could be go around the corner. You could be hidden seeing somebody and somebody says to you, well, you know what? Click, but you have to take the action. And that's how I always look at it. My intention is this, my action is this, and the results will come. But I have to say, do not be afraid of failure. We learn from failure more than we learn from winning. I learned from my failure of underestimating athletes. Like in 1999, I don't know whether you lot remember because you're very young anyway. But uh, I was competing for Italy, of course, in the World Championships in, uh, Mad in Seville, in Seville, Sevilla. And I was winning to the last round. And this Spanish girl, Montalvo, I didn't really like her personally, but uh, she's a very good athlete. But, you know, she was f competing on the home ground, and obviously she had the last jump. And I know every time, 10 out of 10, she does a no jump. Nulo. No, but this time she didn't. What happened? The judge looked at the plasticine, and he was decided. Because people in the, in the uh, stadium, you can imagine, were all Spanish. They were whistling. And he was undecided whether he's going to give her a no jump or a good jump. He says, if I'm going to give her a no jump, they're going to kill me when I get out of the stadium. If I give a good jump, I'll be a hero. White flag, valid. Well, you can imagine what I thought. I was the last one to jump. Everyone was screaming, ah, boo, boo. And there was only one person who said, Fiona. Mike says, my coach, Fiona, Fiona, run like hell. I didn't even see it. I was piece of ice, cold, miserable. I went, okay, they ripped me off. But I came second. Could have been worse. At the time, I could have threw the middle away, but I didn't. I went back home. I went on holiday by myself, and I talked to my aunt, my aunt, my, actually my grandma, and she said, this will make you even harder and a very, very fierce athlete, and it did give it to me. Two years after, I got my revenge. I won the gold medal. But all this is all learning process, and I think for you, you need to kind of look at all the bad parts, the failures as a good process for you to, to improve. That's the only thing I can say to you. But it depends on you. It depends on that voice inside of you, in your head. It doesn't depend on somebody coming and saying, well, you have to do this. No, it depends on you. Every one of us has a responsibility. If we all take a responsibility, the world could be a better place. I'm sure of it. But all of us have to take our responsibility and find our own answers. It doesn't depend on our parents, our friends, our boyfriends, our husbands. No, or television or the media, depends on us. And that's why I do. I am true to myself. And I listen to my little voice. I have arguments with this other one, my ego and the little voice. I have arguments with them. But I always listen to my voice, the real voice. What do I really want? And you lot have to find that. Doesn't matter if you're young, old, man, woman, yellow, green, black, I don't care. You have to find your own voice and take responsibility. So what is sport? For me, sport is life. And life is sport. That is for me. What is it for you? Thank you.